Hello, this is Lad May. I'm a senior consultant with Western Computer. Today we're going to talk about five things you'll want to know about customizing your security in Dynamics 365 for finance and supply chain. For this session, we'll assume that you have learned or are learning the fundamentals and the tools of security in D365, including maintaining users, duties, privileges, and permissions, and the relationship between those. If you need more information on security, you can find some great videos on the Western Computer website. Under Resources, search for Security Series Parts 1 and 2. As we've implemented security over the years, we run into the same questions and issues quite frequently, and I would say these are the top five. So I'd like to give you answers on some of these questions and issues before you encounter them in your implementation. So we'll start with the first here. Can I roll back changes? So if I make a change to security causes a problem, can I roll that change back? And the answer is yes, you can. And I would recommend you do so. Make a copy first before you start making changes and even after you make a change and export. I've clicked on data at the top of security configurations and I can click on export. If I do, the system will generate a file that will download onto my browser and I can save that and use it as a backup. If I make changes that I need to go back to, I can import that file. When I import that file, it will overwrite anything that I have in the way of changes, any differences to the roles, duties, privileges, and permissions. You can also use data management to import and export customizations to security. There is a data entity for it, and it will import and export security configurations with anything that has been developed in the development layer related to your customizations. Some of my permissions don't work. The scenario here is that I've assigned roles to users. I'm getting reports that they're not seeing all the permissions that they need to see. This is almost always a result of a user having too many permissions. And I've pulled up user here, Oscar, and Oscar has roles of, for example, accounting manager and accounting supervisor. And let's say that with accounting supervisor, Oscar has access to a particular function and it is just view access, but he needs maintain access. And maintain is part of the accounting manager role. But if he has both of these roles, his access to that function is only going to be read access because the system will return the most restrictive level of security for an object. If it finds more than one, it's going to resolve to the most limited security returned. In this case, if we deleted the accounting supervisor role, Oscar would be in good shape. So there can be conflicts amongst any of these roles. I would be very careful about compounding one role on top of another. Can I make users system users for training and testing? Yes, absolutely. System admin is the absence of security permissions on a role. If you're overstepping security and users with sysadmin can perform any function in the system, I would recommend using real roles for your UAT and for your training. This will focus the user's attention in their area of responsibility, and it will provide realistic results to your tests and to your test scripts. How do I know what needs to be modified? A user needs permission to a particular page, but I don't know right off where that change needs to be made in my security configuration. Let's say, for example, I have a user that needs to be able to maintain vendors, but that user can only right now view vendors. You may have already learned that if you click on options at the top of the page and security diagnostics, you'll see a list of all of the security objects associated with this page. And down here at the bottom, you can see maintain vendors or view vendors. My problem here though, although I can see the privilege is, I don't know which roles that privilege is associated to through which duties. So I've copied maintain vendors here, the privilege, and I'm gonna go back over to security configuration and put in that privilege name and we'll do a lookup on it. 
So privileges here contains maintain vendors. Here's my privilege. And if I click now on view related roles, it's going to show all of the roles that that privilege is related to and the duty that relates it. So by this, I would have some idea of what permission I need to change to give a user permission. What about unpublished objects? You may have learned already that to make a change effective, you have to publish it. So in this case, I'm clicking on unpublished objects. These are roles that I've changed and I could see privileges and duties here as well that will not be active. These changes won't be active until I publish them. The one that says deleting here is this is a role that I marked to delete over here in security configuration. However, it doesn't fully go away until I publish here. So, and I can only delete objects that I have created, or I can only delete my changes would be a better way to say that. You can develop quite a list as you're configuring security. I would recommend keeping this list small. If you've just gone in and touched an object, it didn't make any change changes, publish it anyway. It's the quickest way to get it off of the list here. And you don't want to have a long list because you won't know what you really wanted to keep and what you didn't. Finally, can security changes affect licensing? Yes, they can. So in security configuration, if I go into, for example, the privilege, and I'm going to choose activate BOM versions here, and I'm going to click view permissions here at the top. So I'm seeing here the permissions associated with this privilege along with the license. And in this case, it's using a supply chain license. So you'll want to keep an eye on this. After you make changes, I would take a look at the user license counts report and make sure that your license counts are still in line. So those are five things that I hope will help you with your security implementations. Thank you very much for joining today. Please reach out to us if you have questions, give us a call or send us an email.